Disgrace, now you can't relate to my everyday life. I was doing it right till you came along and broke my stride. Boy, you might have to drown it out to win love and on my woman's couch. Jesus, why you gotta be so loud? Let me be the one to make you shout. Oh, 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 I love it when you wear that sweater. Welcome to episode 60 of the My Two Tips podcast. <sighs> it's hopefully going to be quiet enough for me to record. There has been tons of noise around here this morning that was like drilling and leaf blowers and just stuff. So let's hope I have enough time to ramble on and get this out to you guys as quick as possible. So, it's been kind of a busy few weeks. We had some company stay, which is why this is also a little bit delayed because I just needed a few days to get back into like semi-regular feeling. And then we've also just had, is it daylight savings time? That time change just happened on Saturday night. It's now Monday. It's all good. We're all getting back into things. So, yes, it is definitely... It's been really hard to keep a consistent schedule, which I feel bad about, but that's also life. So we're also coming into tax time. Yay. Not exciting. But it is what it is. It has to happen. So hopefully I can crunch those out myself pretty quickly and then be free of that for a while. Well, wow. till next year. So I am wearing you know when your coffee is just so good that like you just want to like chug it back this cup today anyway enough about beverages beverages um, this is my capsule cardigan I absolutely love this thing. I have been wearing it pretty much non-stop since I finished knitting it. So I knit this as a test knit for Shannon Cook um, back in, I guess it was December, and then it came out the day after I podcasted last time. So it's been probably out for about, has it been a month? Maybe? Um, love it. It is an all over textured cardigan. There is lovely pockets. I'll insert some photos too because you guys know, you know I like to insert my photos. Um, it's an oversized cardigan. I knit the size 40 and I forgot my swatches. I've actually been using a swatch to hold my like cool little needle no row counter from Twill and Print. Um, but this was my first swatch for the textured pattern, which is a really fun stitch to do actually. All of the fun stuff happens on the pearl side of the row. So those of you that don't like purling. I think you'd be fine with it because it's got like a fun rhythm to it. Once you kind of get going into it, it's like, ooh, I actually do enjoy this. So that's kind of fun. Um, I seamed this thingy up, but now can't seem to find. hell did I do in here? It's coming, it's coming. Here we 
go. So, this was my first swatch of the textured pattern, and I loved the fabric. However, it was tighter than all blazes. So, this was knit on the re recommended needle size in the pattern, which is a US 4. Six millimeter, is that right? US 6, four millimeter? I think that's right. Um, so, hmm. Tight. Very tight. It does, you know, I mean, there's a little bit of movement in there. But for the actual stitch pattern that you're trying to achieve, it needed to be much looser. I think this was my next one. A little bit better. Um, but I knew kind of right away that it wasn't quite it. And then I finally happened to find the perfect gauge, which is what I used for the body of the sweater with uh, a US 8 5 millimeter. So I went up a fair amount, but you can see with the fabric, even in this swatch, like it does have a fair amount of openness to it, which allows for it to drape better. Um, also, in the pattern, Shannon gives you a really good like tip on measuring your gauge in this stitch pattern because it's a little tricky to count the individual stitches per row. Um, so what you end up doing is you make a note of what you've cast on, how many stitches, how many rows you knit, and then you measure, and then with math, magic, you end up figuring out what your actual gauge is, which is fantastic. Um, the other swatches I have, the stockinette, very basic, very easy, um, not complicated. Uh, what was this one? Oh, this is another one, so maybe this is my actual fabric for the textured stitch. And then there was also the ribbing pattern. Um, which was lovely. The, this one actually has like the edging stitches and you can see that it doesn't pull in as when you would do garter. So that's a good little tip that Shannon sent our way. Um, but yeah, this cardigan is fantastic. I do want it in another one. I believe... I think it'll happen. <laughs> I think it will just because I've been wearing this so so much. So I did end up using the recommended yarn which is Quince and Co Lark and it's just 100% wool. It's really quite lovely. Um, yeah I'm a big fan but it's getting a little water. Drop shoulder cardigan. So you knit it from the bottom up and then you end up splitting for your front and back to do some shaping. The pockets are done as you go as well. So you'll end up splitting for the hem and then connecting your uh, pocket lining that you knit in the beginning and then go from there it's lovely it's so good I'm so happy with it um, yeah so I don't know I don't know what else to say because I feel like it's my first time or something but, yes and then last time I was talking and showing you my Lily Pilly shawl. It's now done. <laughs> it's done and it's huge. So it, um, you start with stripes and it's knit on the bias. And then you do this lace section, which I increased by. I think two repeats of the lace, so mine's just a tad bit longer. So it's a tad bit longer, and then you do more stripes. 
which I increased again by about 20, it was either 22 or 24 stripes. So rather than like 100, I have 122 or 24. So it is definitely longer. And then I actually did the same amount that's called for in the pattern of the finishing lace. So it's still just that little bit of hint on the end. And honestly, this thing is huge. But I do love it. I haven't taken photos of it yet. Just because I haven't. I don't know. Not quite sure of how I want to try and show it off in photos. Because I definitely need to do more of like a three wrap with it because I made it about, I don't know, 20% longer, 30% longer maybe. But I do really like it. It is great and it's light, like it doesn't weigh a ton and I maximized my yardage so I know that there's probably around 250 grams of yarn in here. No, 200 and 70? It's quite a bit. <laughs> um, and the reason why I know that is because if you've been actually kind of cluing into the way I've been knitting lately is I like to use up as much yarn as possible. Here is what I have left of my main and contrast just two little nuggets and then here is what I have left of the minty green <laughs> so I made some honking tassels and I want one of them to go over here on this end and then another one to go where's my other end on Nope, that's the same end of the lace. Huh. Then another one to go on this end. Because of the bias shape, I it doesn't need it because it's so long, but I just think, I don't know, there's something about these big huge tassels that I think would be really fun. I, don't I haven't quite decided if they're going to actually go on it or not. Um... I was also trying to think if there's a way to devise something to make them kind of removable, optional kind of tassels, but I haven't really fooled around with that that much. But I do know that these two bad boys have about 26 grams each. There's quite a bit. No, that's wrong. 26 grams together. So that's what, 13 grams each per tassel? They're pretty big. I mean, they're technically like the length of my hand. So big tassels. But yeah, so those are fun. Oh, what else do I have to talk about? Oh, I'm gonna probably insert a little video about the nurtured sweater I've been working on and I'm using Elderberry Yarns 100% Coradale undyed yarn and it's about a worsted weight and it's white and it's lovely and it's so soft and smushy which I'd never really felt 100% Coradale yarn before and I'm very very pleased with this so I do know that they'll be at Fibers West and maybe maybe I'll get some more it kind of depends on if I end up going or not I work schedule might kind of conflict with it this year but we'll see so so I thought I'd record some footage of these three sleeves 
because I'm, well, I need to salvage the yarn from this one. So I am knitting the nurtured sweater and here are the three sleeves I have. So this first one here on the left, um, it is knit according to the size three numbers in the pattern. And with my gauge, because I used the sleeve as a sleeve, um, a gauge swatch, um, turned out really, really big. So it turns out that my gauge for actually all three sleeves, I kept them the same. So my ribbing is done on a US 7 4.5 millimeter, and then all of the body um, knitting is done on the US 5. Uh, no, US 8 5 millimeter needle. So that is the needle, and the gauge I got is 16 stitches per 4 inches rather than 18. So my gauge is 2 stitches looser, therefore creating bigger fabric with the same amount of stitches. So um, this first one. I knit according to the pattern and it is way too loose down here at my wrist. There's like a solid extra amount of fabric in through that portion there. But I do like the way it fits up here around my upper arm because I do have a bigger upper arm. So with this first sleeve, what I decided to do um, well, and with my gauge into account, I decided to knit the first size of the pattern and increase up to the same amount of stitch numbers up here according to the third size. So these two sleeves over here are the exact same. I knit them same ribbing, same body, um, but they are the size one numbers, which crazy. Um, but again, my gauge is two stitches looser. So this one shows you the blocked version. And then this one is the unblocked version. So I obviously will block the second one again. But you can just see how the fabric lays quite a bit differently. Obviously, the ribbing is that much more open and relaxed. On the unblocked one, it's just kind of still pulling in quite a bit. Um, so yeah, what I did with this one is the ribbing is done as per pattern and then I didn't do my first increase until about where is it maybe in through here somewhere so I did about a two inch I think I think that's what I did um it might have even only been like an inch more of the actual pattern before doing my first increase because I did want the wrist to stay a little bit slimmer. Um, and then I ended up increasing all the way up to the size three numbers up in here and that got me pretty close to the needed length that I needed. So I will flip the camera around and show you uh, the three different fits of the First, size three, two big sleeve with my gauge, the unblocked proper size that I'm following, and then the blocked version as well so you can see the eventual final fit of how this sweater is going to look. This is the first one. It is the size three numbers at a looser gauge, actually. How I sit over here then I can show you a little better. So the length is totally fine. Comes up, you know, to just around the armpit. Um, I like where it would hit my wrist, but look at all of this extra fabric. Like look at that. It's crazy. There's so much in here. And yes, there's a little bit of extra fabric up here too, but I liked the way that the stitches weren't 
like over stretching around my arm. I really hate when sleeve stitches get very pull. Um, so this one got the NYX pretty quickly. I was thinking it also just adds a lot of bulk, which nobody wants to look bulky in their sweater. So this one, I pretty quickly realized that I had to re-knit it with different numbers and stuff because it's just way too big. So now I can salvage the yarn. Yay. Um, the unblocked version of the actual sleeves I'm going to be using. Ugh. Yeah, so length is good, fit is good. You can see how it actually hugs the arm that much more. The stitches do feel, it almost feels like a slight compression sleeve because it's actually that much more um, closer to my arm, but I know with the way that the first one blocked, these stitches will give quite a bit. So that is the fit of my unblocked sleeve and you can actually see like the definition of my arm that much more in it. So that was a win. And then for the blocked version, you can even just see like the way that it goes on. It just goes on that much better. And there we go. So that will be the final fit of my sweater. There is a little bit of give around the wrist, but I like how it's not it doesn't feel as if my wrist is being like constrained by like a hand cut or something so I quite like it it um, it feels so soft as well I'm sure I'll talk to you more about the yarn in the full podcast episode but I figured I would just give you a little peeky peeky at the differences there So unblocked is over here, blocked is over here, yay! So excited and I've already got the body up quite a bit too so depending on where this goes into the podcast, maybe I'll be showing you the body with sleeves attached, maybe, who knows? Hopefully I've inserted my video. And now I can show you basically the sweater. So in my video you would have seen that I had sleeves. I had, after I filmed that little bit, I salvaged the yarn from the sleeve that was too big and finished the body and have attached the arms to said body and I'm working my way up the raglan decreases. I don't really know how many more I have left to go because, again, doing things a little bit my way. So I have knit the sleeves starting with size one, increased all the way up to size three, and cast off according to size three numbers. I knit the body according to size one and cast off at the underarm at the underarm according to size three. Why? Why would you do that, Elise? Hmm. Because when I come to seam the armpits together, they have the same stitch count, and that just made sense in my brain. Which means that technically I've had less stitches through the front and back and more stitches through like the arm shoulder area. I think it'll be fine because my gauge is larger anyway. It should fit quite well. I'm not going to put it on now because it's a bit of a hassle. But maybe I'll insert a photo if I try it on later. But I think it's coming together pretty darn well. I know at some point I'll have to do some short rows 
I think they come into play before the ribbing around the collar. I don't want it to be like too high of a neck. I also don't want it to be too crazy of a boat neck. So I'm kind of monitoring what's happening there. And that's the Nurtured Sweater by Andrea Mowry. And it's been wonderful. It's been really enjoyable to knit actually. So yay. Alrighty, so I haven't picked up the bla the baby blanket, um, which I probably should do soon and get that finished, because um, that would be good to get finished and see how big it turns out, because I honestly have no idea where it's kind of sitting size-wise right now. Um, Last time you might recall I said something about being on a yarn diet. Um, well, I think it was that night. <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, I brought the yarn diet <laughs> with good reason. So, I have been wanting to try the Madeline Tosh work sock base after hearing Caitlin of the Wool Jewel podcast rave about it. And essentially, I found out that they had an update. They stocked it again in a whole crazy buttload of colors. So I was like, kind of want to get it. Kind of need to get it. I'm going to get it. And. Another big reason for that is that I will eventually be test knitting Caitlin's newest sweater design in that yarn. So, uh, well, when you break a yarn diet, go big or go home, right? I may have purchased two options to knit Caitlin's sweater. So I guess that's pretty accurate. This one over here I believe is a new color and it is Breakup Makeup. And I really love it. It's just like a pink but it's not like in your face pink. I guess there's a slight like dusty pink quality to it really like it and the work sock base is 75 merino wool 25 nylon sport weight so lovely these guys 200 grams gains there's 400 yards in here yes please and then this one which i was a little surprised with when i got it is their calligraphy colorway which is usually great this has a lot of pink and purple in it, so I almost wonder if these should stay together and become like a striped pullover cardigan something. We'll see. But I have two of each of these because her sweater pattern for, uh, I think up to the size medium, maybe even the large, might be able to squeak out from two. So we're going to kind of test that out. Um, and then of course, because you know I can't resist, the whiskey barrel. Mm. Oh, it makes me so happy. Um, I'm obsessed with this color. I've knit with it once. let that sink in. Um, I also have this in their worsted vintage and in their regular like Tosh sock. Um, I don't think I need three different whiskey barrel sweaters but you can't stop a girl from loving what she loves. You just can't. So I have four of these bad boys, which I'm kind of thinking might need to become that, oh, is it the Sode 
Sade, Sade, Cardigan from Lane Magazines, six, I think it was. It's like huge, cabled, it's gorgeous. Um, the Epic and Whiskey Barrel. But we will see what happens. This is probably just going to live in my stash for a while and I'll probably just pet it on the regular and swoon over it because it just makes my heart so happy. Oh, at least that doesn't seem too crazy. Yeah, well, there's more. So, I seem to be influenced by lots of people lately. These are kind of crazy colors. This is all because of Rebecca over at, she's one half of the Mean Girls Knit podcast and she over Christmas had a Mad Tosh advent calendar and she knit the Unicorn Parallelogram by Stephen West and her first three colors kind of went like so the bottom one isn't the exact one she used. This is a light gray, which is Silver Fox. And then the pink here, which is pretty damn bright, is Grapefruit. So good. And then this crazy scheme is Mac and Cheese. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm fairly convinced I might do like a more I can't say it's toned down because I mean these colors are kind of wackadoodle but it's not going to be a 24 striped shawl it would just be many repeats of the same sequence quite possibly in the parallelogram because it just seems why not I wouldn't have to think too much. It could be a knit that I could easily, I believe, take with me for quite a while. Um, so in love. But then I also pulled out of my undyed yarn stash just some plain knit, knit picks. Um, <sighs> Preciosa, I think is what it is fingering tonal which it's undyed so not really tonal but it is their single ply 100% merino and there's 437 yards in here 200 grams so I was kind of thinking some variation of these four colors all the way through just because the white makes these two pop that much more. I also like it just with the white instead of the gray because then these colors will really pack a punch. Um, so let's just hold these up for you here. There's this tricolor option, mac and cheese undyed grapefruit or we could go with my original inspiration of mac and cheese silver fox and grapefruit or we can do some variation with all four uh this one looks pretty good too so I would say if you have any like I don't know if you're swayed one way versus the other two ways why don't you leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think if there's any other patterns that you think of that might work really well with this kind of palette or with a three option uh, let me know because I really want to use these guys um, I'm so inspired by the these two colors. It's ridiculous. I actually think a grapefruit sweater would be so much fun. 
Um, but yeah, so these are the Tosh Merino Light, which is their single 100% Superwash Merino. I believe it's Superwash. It just says Merino Wool on it, so now I'm questioning myself. But whatever, regardless, single ply. Yay! And that was the yarn purchase that broke, um, broke the diet's back, I guess we can say. Um, but I didn't stop there. I think I have a problem. So I ended up somehow being within very close proximity to the three bags full yarn store. Where is the other one? I have it on it. Okay, so uh, we ended up being within very close proximity to the three bags full yarn shop. After going to lunch, after dropping our company off to the airport, um, which I am going to totally get distracted by food right now. I don't think I've mentioned it on here. I think I mentioned it on an Instagram post that I'm trying to eat a more plant-based diet. It's going very well. And luckily here in Vancouver, we are really, really lucky to have some amazing, basically vegan restaurants out here. And the one we went to that day is Meat on Main. They have a few different locations, so it's like Meat on Gastown or Meat on, or Meat in Yale Town. I don't really know how they word those ones, but great food. We had Oyster Mushroom Calamari. Oh. I guess if you don't really like mushrooms, maybe doesn't sound that appealing, but honestly, so good. I want to make them, but I don't have a deep fryer and I don't trust myself with like a big pot full of oil because it uh, hasn't worked well for me in the past. But then I also had like just a taco salad, which oh, so good. I've also had their poutine before which comes with like a cashew gravy so good um but yeah so I do post a fair amount of like food related stuff on Instagram that it's stuff that I kind of get obsessed with and make at home as often as possible so if that interests you I usually post them into my stories sometimes into my beauty thing but they're there, ask me questions. Um, not that I'm an expert on anything, but if you wanna know what I'm up to, ask me. So we stopped into three bags full. And I came home with some yarn. So they have recently started carrying Wild in the Woods, which is Serena's, I believe that's how you say it. Cause it's not Serena, I don't think. Serena. Serena. I think it's Serena. Um, who is Wild in the Woods, which her stuff is gorgeous. I saw this marled and I believe it's the worsted. Yes, this is her two ply worsted weight. And it's kind of this neutral with a gray. Um, this skein is quite plump because the shop owner washed it to give people in the store an idea. Um, of what it looked like washed because it's a natural yarn. Um, I didn't buy it for the reason that it was already washed, it just was the one that caught my eye. That's really the only reason. So this I think will be a hat for me at some point. Just lovely and neutral. Haven't done that in a while. Um, and then I picked up Technically, this is the wrong color, which you can really see it on camera. I couldn't quite tell in the store. Um, I also didn't look at the label in the store, so shame on me. This is Lichen and Lace 
Rustic Heather Sport in the coal colorway and I bought it with the intention of adding it to stash yarn but it's in a different color so I have some of this base in my stash in her ash colorway which is just a slightly lighter charcoal gray not quite as dark um, and I also bought it with pollen because I was thinking if this went with ash I could just add this in as a very nice contrast color for some color work so I'm not entirely sure how that's going to work but I love them all the very same and then that brings me to this guy there's actually two one is gained up and I realize they just like big look like big black masses um, but this is Studio, Don Studio Donegal Darny or Donegal because I believe that's how you actually say it thanks to um, Grace who gave us all a little heads up here's how you say it um, but this is a fingering four ply tweedy yarn and it's lamb's wool and it is really soft so when we were in the yarn store my boyfriend and I it was his birthday and I said hey you know you've been telling me that you need another hat because the one you've been wearing that I knit you you kind of need a new one so we picked this up I do realize that I can probably just hold this double with one skein and have enough, but I bought the second one because why not? Um, it is quite fine, but that doesn't bother me. So what I'm thinking of doing is I wanted him just like a basic beanie or toque. And what I'm thinking of doing is I want to have the brim ribbing really long so that it goes down far enough over his ears and like around and I think I want to knit it, knit it doubly as long so I can do a folded up brim just to give it that little bit more hug because the hat that I have knit him it I mean it's fine he really likes it but it just gets stretched out when he wears it all the time and it doesn't quite stay on his head that well anymore so I'm thinking you know do a little bit of design changes and we'll see what come see what I come up with um, and then I think I would just do very basic crown deep creases nothing nothing too fancy smancy there um, that's kind of it I don't have anything else really on the go because I'm trying to just use what I have um, but also just make really smart choices in regards to like what I'm going to wear um, knitting another capsule cardigan is really high on my list but I need to find the right yarn for it I kind of want like a pink version kind of obsessed with like pinks right now <sighs> kind of but I wonder if maybe maybe that would be too much um yeah I don't know we'll see what's going on in regards to that within the next few weeks because spring is on the way so maybe I should start kind of like hmm let's like get some warmer weather and it's on the go but screw it well yeah I'm gonna leave it there for today because I don't really have anything coming to mind right away because my head is just kind of like poof blank space but if you have any questions comments whatever you can always leave them below or you can email me at my two tips at gmail.com or message me on Instagram. You guys know where to find me. Um, so I think that's it for today. I hope that you have a wonderful time. Until